Okay, today we're going to study slope, slope of a line or a linear equation. Now, which, when I say line linear equation, that's the same thing. Because if I give you a linear equation, y equals 3x plus 4, if I graph that, it gives me a line. How many points determine a line? Two. So two points determine a line. Therefore, in order to determine slope, we have to have two points. Slope is determined by any, any, and I should have that word in there, by any two points on a line, because obviously there are an infinite number of points on the line. I highly recommend you use the ones that are whole numbers. They're a lot easier then. There are two ways to determine slope. The first way is with a formula. And what slope stands for is the rise over the run. Have you heard that before? Rise means what? Going up or down, correct? So which coordinates are we talking about? The x's or the y's? The y's. The y's are the ones that tell you. And this is what you're finding. You're finding the change, the difference between the y coordinates. So difference means what operation? Subtraction. Subtraction. All right. And then the run is the change in the x coordinates. Rise over run. And when you see slope, whether it's written this way or not, slope is always a fraction. Very important that you remember that. Always a fraction. Even if it's the whole number 2, how do I make 2 a fraction? 2 over 1. Because slope has two components to it. It has how many you're growing up or down, and it has how many you're going to the right. We are basically always, go for the run, we're always going to move to the right. The other way to determine slope is by counting. This will be your favorite method, counting. Because you've been doing it for a while, and you're probably pretty good at it. I did say probably. Here is an example of a line with a slope. Now notice, why well, that was actually a very important statement. This is an example of a line with a slope. What does that imply? No, what does it imply? I, that, not all lines have a slope, correct? There are two special cases. We'll see them here in a couple minutes where they don't. All right, so let's go back. There are two ways to determine it. The first way is with a formula, or one way, I should say. The formula is this, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So we know the sub 2 and the sub 1 just mean that they come from a coordinate. But notice, see how the sub 2's are both first? What is the important thing about this formula? Hey, whatever y you from wh whatever y you choose to be the first y on top, the x that is with it in the parentheses has to be the first number on the bottom. That's the only important thing. If you do, if you do it backwards, you're going to end up with the wrong number. So putting this this formula into action. Putting this formula into action, I can determine the slope of this line by using this. The change in my y, I can choose either one of these y's to be first. Which one, do, which one should I choose? 3 and do 3 minus 5? It doesn't matter. You'll still get the answer either way. I can do 3 minus 5 or 5 minus 3. I'll still get the same answer in the end. 3 minus 5. Well, since this 3 was first, that means the 1 with it right there has to be four. 1 minus 4. I would have chosen 5, so I end up getting whole, uh, positive numbers, but it doesn't matter. What's 3 minus 5? Negative 2 over 1 minus 4. What's negative 3 over negative 2 that's not simplified? 2 thirds. Positive 2 thirds, right? So my slope is positive 2 thirds. Thirds. That means it's going to go up 2 and over 3 from one point to another. The other method was counting. And for counting, you always move from left to right for your coordinates. Otherwise, you'll get the sign of your slope backwards. Yeah, that's exactly. 
So if I want to determine this slope by counting, I'll start here at 1, 3. And then how many do I count up to get to this horizontal line? Well, I go up 1, 2. So my top number is 2. And then I go to the right, how many? 1, 2, 3. What's the slope of my line? 2 thirds. So I can find it either way, by counting or by using the formula. You get the same, th same answer either way. It does not matter. I want you to be accurate. This way could be a little bit faster using the formula, especially if you're not given graph paper right away or handily, but it's up to you. All right, there are four different kinds of slope. Here's an example of positive slope. It starts off low and ends high. Does anybody ever invest in the stock market or their parents? This is what you want to see happen. Your money starts here and ends up here. It ends higher, correct? Yeah. Hmm? Dow Jones Industrial Average, that's part of the stock market, yeah. NASDAQ's another part. Mm -hmm. And you want your money to start low and end high. That means you've made money, correct? It went up. Wow. Yeah. Initially, when it came out, you wanted Microsoft. So this is positive. The next kind of slope we have is negative. It starts higher and ends lower. You're going down. If you were skiing, I like to use a skiing analogy, you would be going down the hill, correct? Gravity takes over. It's no problem. Now this is negative slope. If we, if we figured this and we were going to go ahead and do this, we could go, we'd have to go left to right if we're counting. We'd end up going down one, two, three, and to the right, one, two, three. Gives us a slope of negative one. Yes, ma'am. No. I mean, I could have used two coordinates up here. If I had them right here, these two would both be positive numbers, right? Yeah. No, not necessarily. It could be over here in the first quadrant if this is your line. This line has zero slope, right? If you're skiing, has anybody ever gone skiing? Are you going to go very far if you're on skiing on? No, it'd be like this. <laughs> and you wouldn't move because it has no slope. You just stand there looking silly. Now notice, if we're going to use the formula, I will show this to you. You have the change in y. What do you notice about these two y coordinates? Same number. What's any number minus itself? Zero. You get zero over two, which is zero. What kind of line is this? And don't tell me straight. Horizontal. This is a horizontal line. All horizontal lines have zero slope because the y coordinates are all the same. So when you subtract them, you get zero. It does not go up. It does not go down. It stays static. This is one of the two special cases. I, if I were you, I would anticipate seeing something like this on a quiz or a test. Mathematicians, math teachers, when they're making this stuff up, this, they assume that they think this is a freebie. This would be like easy points for you. Oh, it's a horizontal line. They have to know this is no slope. Zero slope, horizontal line. Here's the other special case, undefined slope. What kind of line is this? Vertical. All vertical lines have undefined slope. If you were skiing, would you be skiing? You would be falling. Gravity would be taking over. Here you are skiing. Here are your skis and your ski poles. And now gravity is taking over and you are just going down. That's like going off a cliff. Bad things happen. It's not the fall. It's a sudden deceleration at the end that hurts. But if you look at this, look at the x-coordinates. They're the same, correct? And that's what goes on the bottom. So if I was going to compute the slope of this, it would be 3 minus a minus 2 over 1 minus 1. Well, you get 5 on the top, but you get 0 on the bottom. What's anything divided by 0? Undefined. It is not 0. Remember, z division is grouping. Take five items and put them into zero groups. It's impossible. You have to have at least one group of five. So therefore, this is undefined. So vertical line, 
has undefined slope. If your x-coordinates are the same, you have a vertical line. Yes, sir? They, yeah, zero is the most common answer I get. Most common wrong answer I get, zero. Oh, you know, it's, it's zero there, so five divided by zero is zero. No, five divided by zero is undefined. All right, so we're going to compute some slopes now. And we can graph or we can use the formula. We'll see. If I'm going to use the formula, I'm going to make that the, my y sub 2 there. So I have 5, <coughs> excuse me, minus a minus 3, because I'm subtract, oop, minus 2. And the y's go on top. 5 minus 2 on the top, and then on the bottom I get 5 minus a minus 3. Change in y. Y coordinates go on top. 5 minus 2 is 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. So that, though, that line that runs through those two coordinates that would have a slope of positive 3 eighths. That means if I were looking at on the graph it, between those two points, I would go up 3 and 8 to the right. Here, it doesn't matter which one I choose first. I'm going to use this negative 4. So when I subtract the 8, it becomes positive. Negative 4 minus a minus 8 on top. So that becomes plus. And on the bottom, negative 3 minus a minus 2. So I get negative 4 plus 8 is 4 over negative 1, which gives me a slope of negative 4. But remember, I'm thinking in terms of a fraction. So even if I have negative 4, there's my slope. Is it okay to rewrite it this way, though? Could I write negative 4 over 1? Could I move the negative sign up to the top of the fraction? Yes. It doesn't matter where the negative sign is. It's still a negative overall. So you did not change the value of the fraction. Negative 3, 4, and 4, 4. I think that was a negative. We could also graph to find the slope. Negative 3, negative 4 is 3 to the left and down to 4. Right there. 4, 4 is right there. If I'm going to graph this line or find the slope of that line, there's my line. I'm going to count. The top number has to be how many up or down. So I go left to right. I'm going this way. Left to right when I count. I'm going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to get me to here. Oops. There. And then I count to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to get me there. 8 sevenths. Should I reduce that improper fraction? No, not with slope. With slope, leave all everything as a fraction, even if it's improper. Because fraction has two components, a rise and a run. If you, have an, if you have it as a mixed number, there are three components to that. You want it as a fraction always. If that's 1 and 1 seventh, you have to switch it back to an improper fraction to figure out the rise is 8. That's why. Good question. If we're going to graph this last one, negative 2, negative 4, and negative 2, 3. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 2, negative 4 is right here, and negative 2, 1, 2, 3 is right here. What kind of line is that? Vertical, what's the slope? Yes. So what I do when I'm looking at this finding the slope of any line, the first thing I look at is the coordinates. If the x's are the same, it's undefined. 
if I would have two of the same y coordinates, it'd be zero. So that's a shortcut I try and remember. The other thing we could do today is if you're given one coordinate, you know how to count to find the slope, right? You can graph a line because how many points do you need to determine a line? Two. So negative two, two is the slope which means what's the slope I need to think of? 2 over 1, right? Because I need to think of it in terms of a fraction. And then my coordinate is 2, 1. All right, let me graph my coordinate. 1, 2, up 1. There's my coordinate 2, 1. And what did I say my slope was? 2 over 1. And I don't know why this is. Slope is denoted by the letter M. I'm sure I knew it at one point. I don't remember. It probably wasn't that important to me. It's probably because it's something French. Maybe. I don't know. It, well, Descartes was French. He's the one who came up with all this junk. I was not there when they made the decision on the lettering, so M is slope. So when you see M, this chapter, it's the slope. It's not just a plain variable. It means something. Slope is denoted by the letter M. So from here, 2, 1. I can count, right? Define my other coordinate. I'm going to go up 2, and I'm going to go 1 to the right. 1, 2, and over 1. Up 1. And I can keep repeating it over and over and over again as long as I want. I like to do it at least twice. It makes my line more stable the more coordinates I have. But you only really technically have to do it once. Can I do this? What did I just do there? Down 2 and 1 to the left. I did what? I made them both negative, didn't I? What's negative 2 divided by negative 1? I still have a slope of positive 2. So I worked in the opposite direction of both. But it still falls on the line. Draw my line. There we go. There's the graph of that line. Goes through the coordinate 2, 1 as a slope of positive 2. This one, what's a little bit different about this one? Well, look at the slope. It's what? What kind of number is that? That would be a fraction, right? So this one has a fractional slope. What you will find is the bigger the number, the steeper the slope. Fractional slopes are much more gradual. They'll go up mu much less oh, steep, I guess. Negative 3, negative 2, and a slope of a half. Negative 1, 2, 3, and down 2. This gives me the coordinate negative 3, negative 2. Slope of 1 half means up 1 and over 2. And I can keep repeating this up 1 and over 2 as many times as I want until I run out of room. They'll all fall on the same line. See? They all hit that line. And that's how we graph lines using one coordinate and the slope. Because you can count to find the other coordinate. You need at least two to determine a line. 250 and 251, 1 to 35 all.